Welcome back to RBD Block Challenge. We are working on block number seven. Can you believe we've already made six blocks? This is a fun block to make and it's designed by Melissa Mortensen of Polka Dot Chair. And it's called On Point Hourglass. You can see the hourglass in the center and these flying geese flank all sides and it makes it a nice on point look to this block and then you have the half square triangles in, in the corners. So the first thing you're going to do is download the pattern from our Riley Blake Designs website. It has all the measurements and the cutting instructions, the materials you'll need to create this block. I previously cut out all my pieces and put the corresponding letters to all my pieces. So let's get started on making this block. The first thing we're going to do is grab our big squares the A and B blocks. And you are going to mark, I usually mark the lighter piece. Let me grab out my, with a mechanical pencil marking tool from corner to corner. And that is going to be your sew guide. You're not going to sew on that line. You're going to sew a fourth inch on each side of that. And sometimes if they're coming out a little bit smaller, I even do a scant fourth an inch. So just tiny, a, a little bit less than a full quarter of an inch. Okay, now that is your guide to cut this in half and you're going to have two half square triangles. We're going to make our hourglass block now. Now you can choose to open up your seams. I'm going to press these to one side, just pressing them to the dark side. It reduces your bulk when you're opening up your seams. So that's the positive aspect, but it also makes your uh, block a little weaker if you're just putting stress on the seams when they're open up. It's your choice what you, what you want to do. You're the, you are the boss of your quilt and you can choose how you'd like, what you'd like to do with your seams. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to make my hourglass block and I kind of lock that into place like that because my seams are going opposite directions. I'm going to pin it on that side on that side so it doesn't shift when I'm sewing. And again, just fold it back to check to make sure your hourglass is going the right way. Those should be on opposite sides. Then you're going to mark corner to corner. And again, that's going to be your guide. You're going to sew a fourth inch seam allowance on each side. Okay, bring your block out, take your pins out, and flip it back. Take a look. My points are lined up right in the center and looks good. I assume they'll be in the same on the other side. And now that drawn line is your cutting line. All right, you have two hourglass blocks and you only need one. So you're going to put the other aside for another project or you can use it for the back of your quilt or something fun like that. Now on the pattern it mentions that you can open up your seams right here and press them open. That is an option. 
I tend to never open up my seams because when you open up your seams, all the tension is on the threads, not the fabrics when they're flipped to one side and your, your quilt is long arm quilted. So I'm going to press my seams to one side. It doesn't lie as flat as it would if you opened up your seams, but that's okay. And you're the boss of your quilt. You can press your seams however you want and no one's gonna look at the back side of your uh, quilt top. So I'm gonna press my seam to one side. And then I'm gonna square up this block. And I think that lies pretty flat on its own. So here is my block. I'm going to square it up to five and a half inches. And I just love this tool because you can line the hourglass right in the center. And then you're going to trim around. You're going to put a little pressure on the center of the square up tool. And just going to rotate around. Oops just shifted slightly so I'm gonna just shift there we go so our hourglass unit is finished it's all squared up and it will be ready to go when we assemble our block I'm gonna put it down here and the next thing you're going to do is do your flying geese so you're gonna grab your C and your F squares and rectangles And then you're just going to make some flying geese. Of course, we know that the first thing you do is just mark all your squares corner to corner. Now these are going to be your sew lines. And we only need four to put on one side of our block. So we're gonna put on one side. I'm gonna take it to my pressing station and press it on for a temporary adhesive so I don't have to pin. And then I'm gonna take it to my machine to sew on. You're gonna make sure it goes across diagonally that direction. And we're gonna do our four flying geese and chain piece them together. bring them back, do a quick check, making sure they're going the right direction. Clip my threads in between. Now we are going to trim them, measuring a fourth inch from your seam allowance. I'm just gonna trim. Okay, let's give a good press. Okay, I'm going to leave those here. And then we're gonna add the second part of our flying geese. It's gonna go corner to corner, making sure your point lines up along there. Quick little press on there. All right, let's take a look. Clip all our threads.
They look good. Let's trim off our flying geese. Again, you can even use your scrap ruler. Actually, that's probably the best way because you can just line up that fourth inch right on that side. Okay, let's take it to our pressing station and press open our flying geese. Okay, bring them back over here. I am just gonna put all my little scraps under here. Now they should ma measure five and a half across, and you can kind of line up your fine, flying geese at the top and see if you need to trim off any parts of that. So I'm not trimming off the bottom at all. So this square up ruler that's five and a half works ideally. So you can kind of line it up like that. And just ever so slightly. But sometimes, um, you know, if you have a lot of small cuts, they can add up to your bl block being off. So it's nice to trim it up. So that's the perfect size flying geese. I'm just gonna repeat it on all three of these flying geese. Again, you don't wanna cut off any of your tip. So you make sure that tip is underneath the fourth inch seam allowance. Okay, that is ready to go. I'll put that underneath here. Those are ready to assemble our block. Now let's work on the half square triangles. So the last two squares you're going to need are the D and E. And again, we're just marking corner to corner to make our half square triangles. That's going to be our guide, not our stitch line, because we're gonna make four half square triangles with two squares. I'm gonna give them a quick press so I don't have to pin. Right, bring it back here. Trim that real fast, and that's gonna be our cut line. Okay, let's go Press open our half square triangles. Okay, now let's square them up. They are, need to be squared up to three inches. Now I have a three and a half inch square up ruler. So I just pull it back like that. Then line it up. Now there's not a big margin of error on these because they are almost exactly three and a half, or three inches. 
So just measure that. And that is three inches perfectly. So again, you're gonna have to make sure you have a very accurate fourth inch seam allowance because there's, like I mentioned, not a lot of room for error on these little half square triangles. Okay, all of our units are sewn and squared up. We are ready to assemble our block. Let me put this over here. Clean up our workspace a little bit. So we have our square in the middle and our flying geese are gonna face out which creates that kind of square in a square pattern. And now we're gonna flip out our half square triangles in the corner. Just kind of adds a nice frame to the block. So now we're ready to assemble our block. Flip that over. Again, I do one long seam at a time and I don't cut my threads in between. You can kind of nest those together. Do you see how I'm kind of clicking those into place? There, and I'm gonna sew down here, use my fourth inch seam allowance. Okay, bring your partially sewn quilt block back, open it up, look at Make sure your points are all lined up. It's looking good. Now these outside units, we're gonna flip over towards the center, just like that. We're gonna pin in the top. Again, just a reminder of where you're starting your stitches. Now, since I didn't open up my seams, these two, uh, I've, they're flipped the same way, so I can't quite click them into place. So I'm gonna pin them, but lining up the center seam like that. Just pin that into place. Again, it's not too bulky, but you would have a little less bulk if you did open up your seams. I just tend to never open up my seams. So let me take it to the machine, let's sew. Okay, bring it back, open it up, take a look. It was a little bulky to sew over that, but um, I just gave it a little gentle nudging across that um, area and it, it worked out just fine. So now I'm just going to see how everything's naturally falling. So that wants to stay open like that. So I am going to flip this the other way. So I'm going to nest those seams. So my flying geese, I'm going to flip towards the center like that. I'm nesting those seams right there. this outside edge. And again, I am, that wants to f stay open. I'm gonna flip that towards the center. And then line up the outside edge. Okay, let me flip 
flip that the same. Again, that wants to flip out. So I'm going to line that up. There is a lot of bulk right here. So you're gonna have to just encourage your machine to sew over that bulk. Okay, we just sewn that last seam and it looks good. So let's go give it a press. I'm gonna just give it a big spritz. Okay, let's take it now back here and let's square up our block. All right, let's line everything up. We've got our hourglass block in the center. I'm gonna move this up just a little bit. And take a look. Make sure your hourglass is centered. You've got all your points on your flying geese are centered as well and you just don't want any points in this blue area so any extra i'm going to trim off pressing down so your block doesn't shift as you trim around just gonna line that up right there and your on-point hourglass block is finished. I can't wait to see what Melissa does with her block. I'm so excited that you're following along and sewing along with us. Join us next time for block number eight in our RBD block challenge.